Hey guys, how's it going? This is Mike from MNR Automotive. Today we have a 2023 and up Ford Super Duty and we're installing a 30 inch light bar. Uh, first thing, let's go ahead and take this top cover off. There's 12 push pins. We're gonna go ahead and pop those up and take the plastic grommet out. So the way you do it, you just use a pry tool or a screwdriver, come underneath it, pop it up and it comes out. So we're gonna do that 12 times to get all 12 out. pins off we can go ahead and lift the top mat maneuver to get around the hood latch all right next thing we have to do is uh, one two three four take these bolts off and two push pins so you want to do on each side there's a cover plate here just pry with a screwdriver we're going to remove the cover and there's a bolt hidden here and that's what holds the bottom of the grill and it's the same thing on the passenger side. Just pop the cover off. So now let's go ahead and take this bolt off. It's another 10 millimeter. Now that we remove these two bolts, let's see if we can continue unclipping everything. And there's two more things that we have to do. There is a camera that we have to disconnect, as well as a water source. So for the camera, there's a red button here. When you press it, you should be able to. It's on the bottom. It's right here. So when you press it, you should be able to disconnect it. And then for here, there's a ring. I think let's try to remove the ring first. It looks like it can. And then it comes off. So now after the electronics is disconnected, we can go ahead and remove it. All right, next thing we have to do is remove this trim piece here because the bolts that we're going to use for mounting is right next to the tow hooks. So in order to do that, grab a prying tool there's five clips on the bottom and five clips on, on top. So from the top ones, pop them down and then you'll be able to remove them. So now when the five on the bottom and the five on top are removed, we can go ahead and unclip it and just work your way around the whole thing and it pretty much just comes out. So now we're ready to install the mounts. Here's the orientation of the driver and the passenger. If you notice here, we did weld some nuts on the back so that way when you put the bracket through the bumper here, you don't have to hold the nut back. It's more for the convenience of the install. So let me show you how to get it done. You're gonna go through, through this opening. As I put the bracket through the opening, I'm gonna look for the hole and if you look at my finger here, there's an empty hole in the frame of the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and put my bolt through it and thread it through the welded nut. There we go. Okay, so now you see, I wanna show you again where that bolt hole is. You can see the shiny uh, hex head right here. That's the one we used for the bracket itself. We only finger tighten it because I like to actually have the position of the light bar when the light bar goes in between. Then I tighten the sides. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the passenger side. I'm gonna slide the bracket in. The hardest part is aligning it all together. There we go, this looks good. It's hard to get the camera in here, but you'll feel the hole here align, so that way the bracket stays out here. So now we can go ahead and mount the light bar. Go ahead and grab your button head bolt and washer. I'm gonna thread them on both sides. Tuck the wire away here. Because we didn't tighten this all the way and just finger tighten it, we can go ahead and adjust the bracket. Okay, we are gonna have to remove this when we put the grill. Right now we're just getting the placement of the light bar itself. But keep in mind, the grill cannot be installed with the light bar in the way. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts, remove the light bar once again, and then put the grill back on because it won't, won't clear the light bar itself when you're trying to clip it on. Now that we got the placement, we can go ahead and tighten these side bolts. It's a 13 socket. So now for the last step of the install, we're gonna go ahead and remove the light bar so that way we can put the grill back on and then we'll reinstall the light bar. Now we have the spacing perfect for the brackets. 
Before we install the grill, I want to route the wire, how it's going to come from the light bar to the auxiliary switches, which is on the passenger side. Go ahead and feed it through here. Behind the radiator. Extend the wire. So now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the grill. And don't forget the two connections we've disconnected in the beginning of the installation based on the trim that you have. So we have the camera and the windshield washer tube, right? So which we disconnected when we took the grill off. Make sure to connect it before reinstalling. Now that the grill's on, we can go ahead and install the light bar and run the wiring. And we can go ahead and reinstall the lower grill with the same clips that we've taken out previously. So we have the grill on and the light bar is installed. Let's talk about the wiring. Uh, a single function light bar comes with two wires coming out of it, a red and a black. A black is for the ground and a red is for the positive, which is going to connect to the auxiliary switches. If you purchased a dual function light bar, you're actually going to have three wires coming out of it. You have the red and black, which is the positive and the ground, but you also have one additional one, the blue one, and that's the second function of the DRL. So you're going to actually have to use two switches to provide power because depending which wire receives power is what color are going to turn on. Okay, so on your passenger side next to the battery there is an auxiliary box here. In order to get to the auxiliary wires that are already pre-wired and are already hot you have to remove this box. There's two clips and the way to get to them is just by using a flathead and just pry it up and then wiggle the box out On the bottom of it, this is where you have all your auxiliary uh, connections. Let's go ahead and free up these wires. And there's also a little legend of what color wire does what. Here, let me go ahead and take some of this electrical tape off. Go ahead and put an eyelid on the ground. I'm going to use this bolt here. Feed our eyelid through it. The ground for our light bar. Now that we have the, the ground of the light bar on the negative terminal of the battery, let's go ahead and uh, pick the auxiliary wire. So when looking at the chart, uh, we're looking for a green wire with a violet tracer and that's auxiliary switch number one. So I think this is here, although it's not very violet, it's more white, but I'm going to go off of this as a white, as the, as a green wire. I'm going to crimp it, uh, I'm going to strip it. I'm going to put a crimp connector. Overall, it wasn't difficult. Now we're just going to go ahead and reinstall the auxiliary box back. Maybe use a couple zip ties on the wire. Oh, nice. Awesome. So everything worked fine. Make sure to use the brown wire with a green tracer for switch number one and rely on the tag of the bundle to let you know what switch is what amperage and um, the color scheme. Thank you guys for watching and I know you're going to love the product.